Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well on this Wednesday evening. Hope you've been enjoying these beautiful days that God's been blessing us with. We are glad that you are tuning in tonight for a period of Bible study. And tonight, if you want to grab your Bibles, we are going to be in Numbers chapter 13. And I encourage us tonight just to let God's Word speak to us and let's think about what He is trying to tell us through these words and you know, last week we talked about um, we talked about contentment uh, in regards to the children of Israel, and we related that to ourselves, and you know how sometimes we struggle to be content. But tonight I want to talk about our our attitudes and our perspective. So, if you want to again turn to Numbers chapter thirteen, we're going to start in verse twenty six. But of course. Uh, to set the, the stage for the situation that's going on, um, Moses, he's with the children of Israel. He's, he's leading them through the desert, and uh, God wants uh, the children of Israel, he wants to send in some spies into the land that he has promised them. Uh, he wants them to go in and check it out and report back to their brothers and sisters what they see, what the land is like, and Moses, in the beginning of chapter 13, uh, commands different people from the different tribes to go be a part of this. So that's what's going on. They do go into the land, and it is indeed a land flowing with milk and honey. It is, it's a good land. It's a land that has a lot of resources, uh, but it's also a land that is occupied by people who are different than the Israelites, people who are powerful, um, and just things of that nature. So the spies, they go in and they, they come back to report to Moses and the other children of Israel. And like I said, we're going to pick up in verse 26. It says, They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. Notice the first word in verse 28. It says, But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Verse 30. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. So again, I want us to notice, you know, uh, Caleb, compared to the other spies that went into the land, he has a different attitude, he has a different perspective. You know, the other spies, they were encouraging in what they had to say about the land, but they were skeptical in their regard to the people who live there and their power. But Caleb is positive, and he feels confident that they can take the land. Verse 31, But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Verse 32, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. So again, Caleb, he had a positive attitude, he had a positive perspective, but the other spies were negative, and it didn't just stop there. They took their negativity, and they, they took it to the other Israelites. They spread their negativity, and this had an impact. And just like in our situations today, you know, when we're negative, when we are pessimistic, and we take those views and those attitudes to others, you know, especially in speaking of the context of inside the church, it can, it can have damage and it can um, just cause bad things. Uh, we see that playing out for the Israelites in the beginning of chapter 14. It says, That night all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. And again, this is because the other spies have spread that negativity. 
verse 2, it says, All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in the desert. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. You know, this seems to be a constant theme with the Israelites. Um, you know, when they were in Egypt and they were in, you know, stress because of their oppression, you know, they were crying out to God, they were weeping, they were wanting to be delivered, and, you know, God finally showed up and he answered their prayers and he led them out. But we, of course, know that this is just a continuous cycle. It didn't take long for them to get out until they started complaining. You know, last week, again, we talked about contentment, and uh, we talked about their displeasure with the manna that God was providing for them and how they wanted meat. And, you know, we saw how God showed up in that situation and how he, you know, basically let it be known that when we complain and when we don't put full faith and confidence in God, we are rejecting him. Uh, and so the story continues here. You know, they they want to go back to Egypt. Uh, they're saying things like it would have just been better for us to have died. You know, this pessimism, uh, this discouragement spread by their fellow Israelites has got them very discouraged and very negative. Uh, starting in verse 5 again. It says, Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there, Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of others. And then I want to read in verse uh, 10 there. It says, but the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. So, you know, some of the faithful, some of those who were putting their hope and confidence in God fell down in front of the other Israelites and basically pleaded with them, you know, not to take that view. They pointed out that uh, what the other Israelites were doing, they were rebelling against God and they encouraged them, you know, to put their faith, put their confidence in God because God was with them. They had nothing to fear with God on their side. And, you know, that's just the attitude that we have to have. And sometimes positivity is not taken well. We see that in this incident. You know, it said that the Israelites, after, you know, Joshua and Caleb and some of the others had said this thing, they talked about stoning them. And, you know, that's just bizarre that sometimes people don't like to hear positivity. They don't like optimism. Their uh, skepticism is so strong that they think their abilities are uh, small. And that's not how it works with God. You know, when we put our faith in Him, when we trust in Him, He's going to help us through whatever situation we find ourselves in. And as we look around our world today, our world is full of opportunities. It's full of ways that we can be the light. It's full of ways that we can love. Um, we don't need to be down. We don't need to be pessimistic when, you know, things are wrong in the world. Uh, God can use us. He can mold us. And he can do great things through us because he's with us. You know, this has been a difficult time with me when we were basically on a shutdown because I've not really known how to minister to the youth of our congregation. We've had 
we've had some Zoom meetings, but it's just hard to connect with all of our kids because all of our kids, you know, they don't have means to get on Zoom and uh, they don't have encouragement to do so in some situations. So, you know, I've worried through this that we are losing our relationships. Uh, we're losing the ways that we were ministering. Uh, but I'm trying to have hope that God, he, he's still working. And, you know, he's going to use these moments that we've went through the past 10 weeks to, to do good. And um, I just have to have the attitude that God is with us. He's with our church. He's with his church universally. And he's going to help us in any way that he possibly can. Uh, verse 11 says, The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me, in spite of all the miraculous signs I have performed among them? I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them, but I will make you into a nation greater than they. So obviously it's upsetting to God when we are negative, when our perspective is just pessimistic and God rejoices in us when we are putting our faith and confidence in him. You know, life can throw curveballs. It can cause us to get down. It can, you know, just really mess with us. But when God is on our side, we have nothing to fear. Uh, like we've talked about in weeks past, we're children of hope. Good is here and better is coming. So I just want to encourage us tonight to think about our attitudes and our perspectives as Christ followers. And let's just not be negative or maybe like some others in the world. And let's just truly take time to be the light and to think about the influences and the impact that we can have on others. I thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you continue to have a good rest of the week. Uh, we've been meeting in person on Sundays. Uh, this coming Sunday will be our third week. Uh, we are taking those safe precautions and will continue to do so until uh, notified otherwise. But we are excited this coming Sunday to have uh, David coming back to be with us. And uh, we just look forward to that time of fellowship and that time to worship our great God. Thank you again.